to this now in a move to clean the Gauteng province. Uh, the government has employed about 6,000 people to help. The program was launched by Premier Banyaza Sufi at the weekend. The Premier says the program is also aimed at addressing food insecurity challenges in households. Let's speak to Mali Lope Gauteng, MEC of Social Development, Agriculture and Rural Development. MEC, good evening to you and thank you so much for your time. Where can we start seeing them? Good evening, and how are you? I'm well, very as well, you know, I'm well. As you know, we just launched our EPWP program, which is really the expansion of a program that the department has been running for many years, called Bontle Kibotu. And we are massifying so that there's a much greater uh, impact that we're having and working together with the municipalities. So that work is starting, and the colleagues that have just been recently appointed will be undergoing training within waste management but also within agriculture, because these are individuals that have re literally been taken straight out of communities and have to now be given those skills, particularly within waste management, um, in terms of separation from waste, um, separation at source and so forth. So we, we're eager to have this huge capacity on board. So which communities do they come from and how did the recruitment process work? They're from all over, hey? absolutely all over. I mean, for 6,000 posts, we got over 77,000 applicants. So, and we had advertised this in January and it closed in Feb. So you can imagine, I mean, 77,000 applications that the department had to go through it was quite something else. But we've been finally able to finalize with that 6,000. Um, and really, they're ready. I mean, they're from all over. It's mm. various, all regions, their representation. And you would have seen that we didn't have a, an age restriction. So uh, it's largely a female contingent and from various ages. I mean, you've got young people, you've got elderly people, and so forth, various backgrounds. And I see that it's a, it's a, it's a temp. For how long are they going to be uh, doing this? So it's a 12-month contract, but you would have heard that the Premier had announced that they're going to be given an extension of six months, so it is 18 months. And But what it is is that for all EPWP programs, it is a limited contract. However, the uniqueness of the work that we are doing, and because it's in waste and agriculture, it's we've designed it in such a way that by the time they are done with the program itself, they'll be able to exit um, fully equipped and be able to stand on their own two feet. So if I am to give an example, for example, the, this, the guys that were called waste pickers, and these are the ones that you see early in the morning carrying those heavy trolleys, they cover their faces, and they carry all sorts of uh, waste material that would be in these trolleys. Those guys earn between 2000 to 7000 a month. Um, and that's because of the, they are able to take this waste and sell it to what we call buyback centers. So we also are increasing buyback centers within our Tish communities, that is your townships and formal settlements and hostels, so that we also can get the community to see that waste is actually wealth. And when these uh, 6000 individuals come out of this, they would have been registered as um, waste pickers, so they'll be able to participate within the waste economy and be able to integrate within the whole ecosystem of waste management and also agriculture. So, I mean, it's there's a whole uh, developmental pipeline of how they will be taught, skilled, and by the time they're done, they'll be able to stand on their own and continue on their own. And I see, of course, uh, you know, some of the, the, the reports suggesting that the Premier aims to now cut, um, you know, the food parcels budget and put more money into, you know, making sure that they, the, there's jobs that are created for certain people and to make sure that at least, you know, some of the families get to benefit in the long run. How much are we talking about here uh, that is being moved from that particular spot into various areas? We still are engaging with the Premier's office. Um, so what I can indicate, though, is that th there's no exact amounts in terms of what the cuts are that the Premier is proposing and so forth. But what I can indicate is that the, the general sentiment that we have as a province is that we really need to move people towards development and empowering them to be able to stand on their own. Because over time, because of the grants that we're given and so forth, then they really do help. But however, we also don't want a dangerous dependency um, that tends to be a resultant of such. We really want individuals. And when you go to communities, you can hear that people don't want handouts. They want hand apps. And that's really what the sentiment is about. It's about making sure that we look into the resources that we have as government and how do we assist people to be able to stand on their own and not be dependent on the state. And that's really just the whole gist 
of the comments and what he had indicated. But as I say, um, yeah. it's, there's still engagement with the Premier, so we will be able to speak with greater clarity and time. How worried are you, though, that if not handled correctly, that might cause a bit of panic? Because you talk about 77,000 applications that came for about 6,000 posts, and that is a huge signal of how bad the unemployment situation is. So if there's a certain movement of money and there could be potentially people who can't even get their food from time to time. How concerned are you that this should be handled with care? Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, the recent um, issues that we have been dealing with, it's, it's quite, as you correctly indicating, that there's a lot of people that might be shaken um, and a bit worried in terms of any cuts um, that are proposed. But as I'm indicating, we, one of the things that we can commit to and we can say is that we'll never in any way neglect the vulnerable because we do know that there are a lot of families, childhood at home, that are able to live from these food puzzles that we give, HIV AIDS patients, um, the elderly and so forth. There's a number of individuals that are, can be regarded as vulnerable who are benefiting from this. So it will be t uh, treated with great care. And that's why we're going to have this engagement with the Premier's office so that whatever it is that we're going to be doing and the cuts that are proposed, we make sure that it doesn't in any way jeopardize the ability for those that are vulnerable and dependent on the state to be able to continue. While, of course, appreciating that those that have an ability to work and do want to work, we must be able to create opportunities for them. So it's really a balancing act and we'll make sure that that is treated with great care. MEC, before I let you go, I'm sure you've seen the report suggesting that some NPOs have faced some budget cuts, citing an elevated priorities program um, by the department. Is there any truth to this? And have you met with some of the NPOs concerned? Yeah, so, I mean, you'll know that that was something that took place a bit earlier now in the year. And there have been a, a lot of progress that has been made to date where there's been engagements with the NPOs and so forth. So the elevated priorities are the priorities of the province. Um, this is about food security, which is what we're just discussing now. The, the appreciating that because of the high unemployment, you've got a lot of people that are uh, therefore food insecure. So it's important that we're able to deal with it. You've got a lot of homelessness, substance abuse, skills development that needs to take place and so forth. So these are what I'm mentioning, are, are what are the elevated priorities? And this is work that the department has been doing. The only difference is that we call them elevated because it's, it simply means that these are areas that we're going to massify on to make sure that there's greater impact in terms of the work that we're doing. And that's why I would have redirected funding towards those and had to rearrange the funding that we have. But through the engagements that have taken place um, with the NPOs and just really appreciating Part of the concerns that they had in terms of their own ability to be able to sustain themselves and the engagements we've had with the premier's office etc part of what premier's indicators that he will be calling an urgent um, provincial budget committee so that we can look into how the elevated priorities can be funded which then means that we don't need to make any cuts all right, MEC, thank you so much for your time. Do appreciate it this evening. That is Mbali Lope, Gauteng MEC of Social Development, Agriculture and Rural Development, talking about these 6,000 people that have been employed um, in about, what, it's 18 months now. This is a program that is aimed at helping the city, um, you know, to be clean. You've seen, of course, what has been, ha in fact, the, the, the province, rather, not even the city. You've seen what has been happening in some parts of this particular province. So let's see um, if it does yield success.